and as a as a fa- you know as a male, we just roll with the punches. That's what we do. We yeah. just get up and do yeah. the same thing the next day. And sometimes it um, causes a lot of mental issues, mental yeah. health issues, eh? Mm. Because you haven't really spoken to anyone yeah. about it, or yeah. or you know you could be running off fumes for months on end, mm. and you don't, and you're just like I'm done. You know what yeah. I mean? It's come yeah. to that point. Yeah. Where no one's checked in, no one's asked. Yeah. Your, you know your partner's on your case, and mm. you just don't know, and you just went boom, you explode because um, you just under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. So you get, you get like that. Oh, you know, I get that. <laughs> we always ready, cause yeah. okay, we're gonna go in three, two, one. Kia ora family, thank you for tuning in to episode 3 of How We Dad, the podcast. Joined on the couch this week by my older brother, Nico. Uh, kia ora whanau, my name's Nico and thank you for yeah. inviting me to your podcast, bro. Too much. Always, brother. Thank you for coming in, yeah. appreciate it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, first time on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit, ner- <laughs> bit nervous. Yeah, a bit nervous. Um, how are you, like... I like to do a mental health check in yep. with all the men that come on the couch. So just want to know how you how you are, bro, and how you been. Um, I've been pretty good, eh? Been been, been good. Yeah. Um, my mental health at the moment is great. Like, mm. yeah, uh, I'm I'm doing good, working. Yeah. Yeah, being a dad. Me. Um, yeah, that's 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 how I am. I'm in a pretty good p- place right now. Yep. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's great. It's good to hear because I legit haven't seen you or caught up with you for ages, eh? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, you know, like, before, as I was, like, lost a little bit, you yeah. know, like, in my life and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. my mental health hasn't always been great. Yeah. But um, it's good. Yeah. It's good now. Yeah. Yeah, so. Before we get any further, I just want to say um, a big thank you for what you're doing. Um, I'm proud of you, brother, for for doing this podcast, and it's been in the in the talks for a yeah, minute. Yeah. So, and and now see, finally seeing um, this in action is yeah. is great, eh? Yeah. So, I just want to chuck that in there real quick. Yeah. For, oh, thank you, bro. Yeah, all good, brother. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah no, it was it was something that we talked about for ages, like like over a year ago, that we yeah. wanted to get this up and going. Yeah. Um, because I didn't feel like there was much light shed on on fathering. So, yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, for everybody else out there that doesn't know who Nico is, do you want to give us a little bit of a, a spiel on where you were born and bred and what kind of influenced you or you know, stuff like that? Oh, yep. So, um, yeah, so my name is Nico and I was born here in Porirō, I believe, in uh, June 1st, 1991. So that means I'm 25. Um, well, well. <laughs> Not good at maths. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, but yes, yeah, so I was born here in Porirō. Um, uh, we got the same mother and father, Lisa and John. And uh, what was the other question? What influenced me? Yeah, 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 you know, just. Oh, um, I I really looked up to like one person that influenced me was Tupac. Definitely, uh, as a young fellow growing up, I loved his music. You know, like Bone Thugs and that kind of stuff. So um, those were big influences. Especially Park Hill was a big influence. On what he rapped about and stories he told, mm. there's a big one here yeah, for me. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, what he was into, eh? That's what influenced yeah. you to be with Puck. But the look was from Slim Shady, I believe. Oh, my look. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. <laughs> with the real Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> Please. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, nah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's tap into a little bit about your um, experience with fathering, bro. Like, tell us about your family. Um, so I'm, I'm actually pretty new to father, uh, fatherhood. Um, I have a 16 month year old son now. Um, and as a father, I, I didn't know what to expect. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, when I first came into, when we found out we were pregnant, we already had plans to move to Australia, yeah. make some money over there and then, uh, come home later once we got our finances sorted. So. But that obviously didn't happen, mm. and then just my partner, we, she fell pregnant, and it was a shock. Like yeah. I remember ringing you mm. and talking to you, like, oh, I don't know if you know, yeah. I'm, I'm too scared, yeah. I'm worried about this, my, my finances ain't there, yeah. and you'd always just be like, 
bro, why are you worrying so much? You know, mm. you already got because I did. We did have some savings yeah. there, yeah. and you're like, don't don't worry. Like, mm. why worry about something that's not here yet? Yeah. Just wait. And those words like really stuck with me when I was like, I'm not ready for this. You know, yeah. just yeah. real worried yeah. and panicky. Um, and a lot of the times I was looking at what other fathers were doing, like yeah. they bought a house and I didn't have a house mm. and they had things that I didn't have. Yeah. And I'm like, I I'm not ready for this at yeah. all. I think a lot of us fathers maybe think the same thing yeah. when you first find out you're pregnant. Um, but yeah, but what you said really yeah. helped. Like just yeah. wait till it happens. Wait till baby comes here. Don't stress about something that's not even mm. needs to be stressed about yet. So, yeah. Sounds like some wise words. <laughs> no, but, um, but I feel you though, because like that's how I was too. Like, you know, growing up, you you get told that having a family is expensive or this is expensive. Yeah. Everything always is expensive, expensive. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah, yeah. But like, we just seem to be able to get it done better than I thought. Yeah. Because before we had Tiaraki, I was I was in the same boat. That's why I shared that yeah. with you because. Man, I was like happy and excited, but at the same time, I was like, "Well, like, I have to keep this thing alive." Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's a big responsibility. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I said to you, "Nah, bro, don't worry about yeah. any of that stuff before it's even happened," because you just, you know, what's his name, Hanson, Coach Hanson says, "Worry is a wasted emotion," mm. and that's where that came from. Like, don't worry about stuff that hasn't even happened. Like, yeah, you know. The course of the future could change yeah, yeah. from here to then. So, yeah. waste of time worrying about yeah. it. And you're right because one son did come. When Kai did come, his name's Kai, by the way, my son. Um, when he did come, mm. it was like everything that I worried about yeah. was no longer a yeah. worry. Like, I didn't worry about money. Mm. Or I didn't worry about, like, we lived in a, um, and a little like a batch thing, it was like a garage thing yeah. that was transformed into Airbnb, uh, Airbnb. It was only a one bedroom, and it was like not fit for a child. I tell you that much. Yeah. But we made it work. Mm. Like we made it work. Yeah. Um, we took that as a blessing, and then now we're in a bigger home, yeah. and then it's even more of a blessing. Yeah. So like the things that we worried about, we didn't need to worry about. We mm. just started worrying about making sure he was sleeping, yeah. he was fed. Yeah. He was, you know, nothing really bad was happening to him. Yeah. Um, and then everything kind of fell into place. Yeah yeah. 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 So all those things that you thought were like a big deal to worry about, you yeah. like come to realize that, oh, actually, uh, it was nothing. Yeah, it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. It was like, what's the point? Yeah. I was just wasting energy. Because yeah. I remember one time you were like saying to me, oh, like we need to get a bigger place because, you know, we're going to have sun soon and mm. this place is too small. And then I was like, bro, hey, your son can't even walk. You know, like, yeah. so it's only a baby like you carry it everywhere yeah. why do you need yeah. space like, yeah exactly so and then when he did start walking we're already in a yeah. place yeah. but literally he didn't he yeah. just laid there <laughs> yeah. I was like oh, what are we doing today yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but those are the those are the times you got to treasure eh? like I remember when I was new to dating and I was like man I can't wait till this guy can like start walking and talking mm. and very now I just want to sit down and be quiet like, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well, that was, yeah, because son, like, those first six months, yeah. or, you know, six, seven, eight months, um, he wasn't really doing much. Yeah. I was especially the six, and, and closer to eight to a year, they started doing a, a little bit more. Yeah. And now he's walking, yeah. and he's crying, mm -hmm. and he's a big daddy's boy. You hear that? Just daddy's boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he is. He's yeah. a big daddy's boy. Yeah. And and um, sometimes I, if I leave the room, he'll mm -hmm. just flip out and... Yeah. Like if I go to work and he's awake, then he starts crying or he, mm. as soon as I come home from work, he'll cry. Yeah. And he won't stop crying until I pick him up. And cause I'm a drain layer, my hands are dirty. Like everything's dirty. I got to take my, you know, my work gears off, mm. wash my hands before I pick him up. And he could cry for like 10 minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and yeah. I'm like, just, just pick him up. She's like, he doesn't want me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that way. Like I remember, um, like with Janelle, when I, you know, because I didn't live with them when we were, the kids were younger. But when mm. I was staying there, I'd like come back from work or something and she's like stressing out, mm. like hard out. Oh, the baby won't shut up and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, give him here. And then she'd get even angrier because he would come to me and then stop crying like yeah, instantly. And yeah. she's like, What's it, what is it with me? And that's when the um, mums start going through that, um, 
like depression stage yeah. eh? or that they, they can go into baby blues from that stage because they feel like they're not doing enough or that the baby doesn't love them mm, and, and all yes. that sort of stuff yeah and did you experience that with with jess when you were you know um, early yeah, on with kai yeah well uh i think because i had the skin to skin um because jess had that postpartum oh hemorrhoid oh not hemorrhoid <laughs> <laughs> what, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> what is that thing called like uh and they bleed heaps I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know the heaps. terminology. Yeah, but <laughs> she started bleeding. So then I had to have skin to skin with Kai. And, and I think that's kind of what got that bondage yeah. going. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I try not to underestimate is the intelligence of a baby. Yeah. Like they know your 100, presence 100. and stuff like that. Yes. So I, um, so when, as you, for your question, like Jess would feel like, well, how come he only wants you? Or mm. like when he's in the real yeah. distress, he comes to me instead of her. Yeah. And sometimes I might feel like, oh, why isn't he coming to me? Have I done something mm. wrong? But she hasn't. No. It's just the way that he copes. Like I might yeah. be his coping mechanism and my touch is what calms him down yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm just, <laughs> that's my experience. Yeah. My dad used to calm me down with his <laughs> touches too. <laughs> I know the ones, man. I know the ones. <laughs> no, um, the left, right, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but yeah, so that happened to Janelle too. She didn't really go like bad into the baby blues, whereas like she needed to like be admitted or anything. But she, um, she was always sad, and like whenever I had baby and baby would just be quiet, she'd mm. be like, "What the hell? What's wrong with me? Or what am I doing wrong?" And yeah. all of these sort of thoughts were going through her head. And I said to her, "You just need to be calm. Mm. You know, like babies can sense when you know." they're comfortable yeah. and if they don't feel so comfortable then they're going to you know cry yeah if you're stressing out and you're like holding the baby and um they can feel that yeah, eh? they can feel that that's why they say to put the baby down yeah so you're, you're better off putting the baby down while while he or she is crying yeah and walk away then you are holding the baby stressing out while the baby's stressing out yeah yeah, yeah. you just drag on that process mm. yeah so yeah um Let's talk about some firsts, bro. Like some firsts, like when did, how did you feel when Kai started going through his first, first oh, eating, first crawling? I wasn't, bro, I tell you now, I wasn't that good with the eating, eh? <laughs> <laughs> like I was terrible, like I panicked. Yeah. Um, Jess was really good because she did a lot of study yeah. on, on, so we did, uh, as a baby lip guinea, baby lip, when they feed themselves. Okay. They learn how to start feeding them. Okay. Yeah. So she started that first that's yeah. why kai like he would never why well, he kind of does now but you can't really feed him yeah he wants to put the food in, in, in the mouth himself yeah i think it's called baby lip i think i don't know i'm pronouncing it wrong but anyway lamborghini yeah <laughs> whatever you want to call it <laughs> up to you <laughs> uh but she he would um choke well it wasn't choking it was just a gag reflex oh yeah but i would take it as he's choking yeah so i would freak out <laughs> <laughs> like, i would yeah. lose my shit eh? and i would I would jump up, Jess, he's choking. Yeah. She would be sitting there calm as like, he's just, he's, he's just going to gag it up and he'll be fine. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, every time I pull him out, flip him upside yeah. down straight to CPR. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then after a while I realized, nah, he's actually just, he'll get it stuck and then he'll gag it up himself. And I was like, oh, true, that's, so, and it was amazing how calm Jess was. Yeah. And if it wasn't for her calmness, and we're both freaking out, yeah. I don't think it would ever feed him, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it would uh, ever get food in him, but... Yeah, because I reckon, like, you know, if I'm sitting on the couch and my baby starts checking, I'm running there too! <laughs> 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 I've never heard of that, to be honest. Yeah. yeah no. The feeding yourself. No, the, the Lamborghini or whatever. Yeah, baby Lamborghini or something, yeah. yeah. Well, just... It's like a new thing now, oh, I think. Okay. It, it helps babies yeah. to feed themselves. Like, at first, Carl was good. Yeah. He was always keen. As soon as... I don't know what happened... But it's like he could taste the food now. Oh, okay. So then it turned into him like throwing food on the floor, like I don't want that one, yeah. or I don't want that one. And yeah, so now it's kind of he's at that age where we don't know what to feed him. Yeah. Oh no, I mean not we don't know what to feed him. We we, we give him food and we see what he throws okay. away and what he eats. Yeah. 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 So. And if he throws it away, you feed it to him more. So you, know, you get used to this. <laughs> yeah. That's what we can afford. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Eat it. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. Hey. You know how much that chicken was. <laughs> 
Chicken not cheap, mate. No. But um, he, so at the moment, he's like, he's weird of the meat. Yeah. Like he'll eat it, but then some, like for yeah. a long time he won't. Yeah. But he's like, he loves carbs. So he loves potatoes, yeah. bread, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He loves it, eh? Toast. Yeah. Chocolate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not me. I don't know what it is about those foods, though, but kids, like, love, like, pasta, noodles, yeah. like, all those carb, mm. carb foods. Man, same, same as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got another baby due very soon. Very soon. soon. Very soon. Eh? Very soon. Yeah. And um, so now that you've fathered Kai for over a year, yeah, you've got a new baby on the way. Yeah. How are you feeling about the dynamics? Or have you even considered the dynamics? Uh, um, what do you mean the dynamics? So, like, so you've got, you're have got going to go from a family of three yeah, and running around after Kai yeah, yeah, yeah. to now having a new boss in the house. Well, yeah, well, I'm actually excited for it, eh? Because yeah. Kai's at that age where he needs a lot of attention. Mm. So sometimes I'm buggered for that. Playing around on the cuppa, getting cuppa burns in. <laughs> yeah. and, um, but now that we're going to have another one coming, I feel like it's good because then now he's going to have someone to play yeah. with after she's like 12 yeah. months or so. Yeah. And then they're just going to entertain each other. At first, having um, children a year apart, because mm. we're going to have two under twos, was scary for me because I was thinking, yeah, wait a minute. Mm. You know, look how stressed I was before Kai came. Yeah. And I want to have two of them. Yeah. Probably make my blood pressure go way up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And then I just thought, you know what? Actually, this could be good. This could be good for all of us. Get the kids out now. Mm. And then, <laughs> that sounds bad. Eh? <laughs> just get over and done with it. Get out. How am I? How am I? But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it'll be good. It'll be good that they uh, grow up together instead of having a massive gap yeah. as we planned. Sometimes not everything goes to a plan. No, so. that's life. Eh? No, nothing ever goes to plan. Yeah. No waste of time having plans. Mm, but I feel like we're going to be a lot content. Like with Kai, it was yeah. real different because it's our first. Yeah. So that's always going to be special. But having the second one, I feel like we're going to be a little bit too chill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because oh, we've done it. We've yeah. already done it. Eh? So yeah. it's just going to be like, oh, yeah, don't put your finger in there, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm happy to have a daughter. Um, a baby girl it's very interesting oh have you got a name yet nah so I, we kind of mix between like we're gonna call her amelia and then leah for short but then i thought about it and i'm like i, I don't know i'm not too keen on that name now but just wants to name her let me get this right aliana aliana and ali for short yeah i was gonna mix up with liliana and ali i think it's aliana yeah oh yeah which i kind of like mm. like i like that name and and Ali for short, so oh yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not in a rush to call her name yet until yeah. she gets here. Oh nice. But having a girl is it's 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 going to be fun. Yeah. Girls are fun. Yeah. No. Like, but it's going to be scary later. Yeah. <laughs> like as being a dad, we all yeah. know. Um, um, I'm waiting for the fun with uh with Talia, but she um, no, she's she's growing. Yeah. She's growing. Chubby ears, cheeks, and yeah. so. Can't wait to go to I work. can't wait till she gets to like one, two, three. Mm. You know, which that's being the real boss. Yeah, yeah. Bossing her brothers around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where were we going? Oh, going back to the dynamics of your house, now you're going to be having the new baby. Mm. What I noticed when we had when we had two for the first time is I still clung on, I clung on to Tiaraki stronger than I did before yeah. Tafiti came along. And I don't know why, but I think in my head I was like, nah, baby, you were here first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will give you all the attention that you're already getting right now. <laughs> <laughs> this new baby's not going to steal your attention, okay? Yeah. I'm going to keep it on you. Yeah. And um, it worked out for us because um, the baby, when they're in their first year, or at least their first 10 months, they're mm. really mum, 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 mum. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. That's their food source. That's their comfort space and stuff like mm. that. So it was easier for Jonah to do everything Tafari related. And I... Like looked after Tiarki, yeah. um, you know, when I was there, and then we were we were tight, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Tiarki would come with me everywhere. He's always like in the passenger seat when his mum wasn't looking, because when she was looking, he had to get back in the back. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, when Tafri come along, 
it wasn't until he got older when we really like started connecting with Tafari again. Yeah, yeah. And then um, yeah, moving on to Coda, and then the game over. It's yes, my best friend. <laughs> yeah, he is, eh? Hey? Yeah. He's had most of your attention though, or Coda, eh? Hey? Yeah, but like I said in the um, other podcast, because we hit, were locked down, and that's when Coda was like just born, oh, and yes. I feel like I grew yeah. up with Coda. So yeah. Like, oh, I mean, Coda grew up with me being around a lot. Yeah, yeah. So he kind of understood my temperament better than the other two boys did. Mm. Mm. So they only see me on weekends. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the question? No, it was just we were just talking about going from oh, having the, the one kid to the two. If I can... Because I love Kai a lot. Yeah. Can I love this next one as much as oh, I no, love? Oh, no, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. But I think I, I could, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, yeah. I definitely can. As always, I love but a room in there. Your connection with Kai will be stronger uh, for longer. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, I'm just so blessed to have a male. Like, I've never, you know me, I've never really pictured myself as a father as much yeah. as I used to talk about it. Yeah. Um, like, I, had, I became a dad pretty... Oh, I want to say late, but you know, 30, mm. I was 30, I think. Yeah. Or 31. No, 30. Yeah, I was 30. So I was 30 when I had Kai. Um, and then it's like, I, I don't think I'd have it any other way. Mm. I feel like if I was a dad younger, yeah. I might not have been the greatest dad out there. But as having Kai now, it's just like, it's unbelievable. But you know, like, yeah. I never thought mm. in a million years, I could look after another human being. You know what I mean? Because I was always selfish in my ways. Mm. Like, I was always about me. Can you say that? But like, <laughs> yeah. Pull the back up. Look, you're all here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was. I was really selfish. And I didn't care about anyone but myself. But now when you have a kid, it's like you got you have a responsibility to uphold now. Mm. You no longer become number one. And which is cool. Like, mm. a lot of people probably struggle to let go of that. But I found it easy because... It was like, this is, he's part of me. Mm. Like, this child is some of me and his mom. And so it was just, it was easy to make that um, switch. Mm. You know what I mean? It was easy to go, Nico, you're on hold, and your family is mo most important right now. Yeah. Nothing else matters. Um, but being present in my family life, being a family man, mm. I should say. So, yeah, yeah. Right. So. Yeah, that's all. That's message to all the young ones out there. <laughs> no. Yeah, because I rem I do remember that you know you rang me one time when you were like, man, like you've you've changed. Like, how did you manage to like change? And I said I stopped prioritizing work. Mm. <laughs> Started prioritizing my family. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, there's some truth in that. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, because you have done. Ah, uh, you were an inspiration to me, bro. Like. You have done so much for your family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then your head's getting a bit of bigger, isn't it? No, oh, no, so <laughs> the head keeps it down. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you've done great. Like, I'll, I'll come to you on family, on father advice and a lot of the times, yeah. you know, and, and that's good how we always there for each other, yeah. much we need, and we bounce off each other. And, and sometimes I get it wrong. Yeah. Lucky, I'll be yeah. like, ah, shut up, uh, you don't know. And then, yeah. I, and then what we just spoke oh, no, about. No, no. I get humbled too. I get yeah. humbled all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's um that's what I mean. Like you can't really plan for stuff as well as like experience teaches you stuff, but you can't learn it before you've experienced it. Mm. If that makes sense. I said again. I think I muddled myself up. <laughs> but what I was trying to say was like you've got to experience something before you know yeah. about it. Like you don't yeah. know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Start stepping out into the unknown. Yeah. It's just And like sometimes I have this theory of how something should go and then I try to roll it out and it's like a flop. Like, yeah, it doesn't work at all. Yeah, but now I know not to do that mm. for the fifth time. Yeah, yeah, nah, that's good. Mm. Um, but it hasn't always been perfect. No, nah. you know what I mean. Even at this early stages of me being a father, like I look forward to many more years to come. Yeah, but like there's been late nights. You know, there's been like. Mm. Me waking up and I got work. Yep. So, you know, I got to wake up at five o'clock in the yep. morning, go to work at six. Yep. I leave the house at six and start at seven. But um, sometimes Jess would be exhausted. Yeah. And she's pregnant, pregnant, mm. pregnant. She's pregnant again. So, like, I got to get up. Mm. I would get up at three o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, yep. and, and get Kaya, put him back down. And 
I mean, those days it takes a lot, and mm. you're going to work tired, and your boss is like, you know, mm. you're not performing, and yeah. you start getting more pressure on mm. you. Um, and as a as a fa- you know as a male, we just roll with the punches. That's what we do. We mm. just get up and do yeah. the same thing the next day. And sometimes it um, causes a lot of mental issues, mental yeah. health issues, eh? Mm. Because you haven't really spoken to anyone yeah. about it, or, yeah. or you know, you could be running off fumes for months on ends, mm. and you don't, and you're just like, I'm done. You know what yeah. I mean? It's come yeah. to that point yeah. where no one's checked in, no one's asked. Yeah. Your, you know, your partner's on your case, and mm. you just don't know, and you just went boom, you explode because um, you just under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. So we get we get like that. I, I, you know, I get like that sometimes. Yeah. And you're not the only one, because no. uh, I mean, there's a lot of us in that in that um, position. Like I remember, I was talking to Ben one time at work, and um, I was like, you know, us men, mm. we need to feel like appreciated. We need to feel like we're we're winning somewhere because yeah. if we are failing at work, mm. if we are failing at home, like mm. we, if we feel like we're failing as a partner because we're getting moaned at all the time, we're failing at work because we're getting you know shit from our bosses. Yeah, we're our kids don't want to spend time with us, so we feel like we're failing as a dad. Yeah. You know, we're getting moaned at from our parents or our family members because we don't go and see them as much, so we feel like we're failing there too. Yeah, yeah. Because you're expending so much energy into all of these places to try to, you know, be uplifted by one of them. Yeah. The only place you're really going to feel like you belong is somewhere with a bloody box and a beer, you know, <laughs> just, you know, with some other bloody depressed people that, yeah. you know, you can share your stories with because... That's the only place you really got to feel like you fit in, or the yeah. only place you feel like you're winning. Yeah, yeah, I'm winning this depression race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. us, and because you know? as males, we love to hear good things, you mm. know. Yeah. Like it's just what we do. Like yeah. you love to hear when your boss says that was a good job. Yeah. So when you're not getting these yeah. as the affirmations, or when you're yeah. getting these love yeah. from your family or from you know your close ones. Yeah. You end up going to your mates that yeah. like to drink, and they go, "Yo, oh, cool guy," yeah, yeah, yeah. and you feel special yeah. about it. Huh. So it makes you. Yeah, but what you're really doing yeah. is um, you just need to feel you just need to feel good like every yeah, once in a while, and yeah. if you you feel like you're failing in all your areas of your life, that's why fucking, that's why bloody <laughs> New Zealand men's suicide rates are so mm. high. Yeah, yeah. Because we're not getting so many, yeah. you know. Well, you're doing a good job. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You know, you ask somebody, "Oh, how are you? I'm fine." Yeah. You know, yeah, all good. Yeah. And then they just drop the conversation there, but. Mm. I feel like people are scared to talk or, you know, bring up real shit to other men because they feel like, oh, you know, like if, if I knew that you weren't okay, I would yeah. be afraid to ask you properly if you were okay because yeah. you might trigger something in me to make me Not, vulnerable yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Vulnerable. That's a good word. Yeah. Um, it's okay to be vulnerable. But how? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's something I always struggle with yeah. for long. So um, I get help. Hmm. Like right now, I'm getting help. And that helps. Yeah. Like it helps me um, understand my brain mm. and and it helps me understand tools, having yeah. tools on how to deal with things. Because yeah. before I didn't know, bro, mm. like I really didn't know yeah. how to deal with things. The way I dealt with things was in a bottle. Yeah. Like, and that's not for everyone. Like, yeah, like don't use alcohol to, yeah. to um, cope because it just tends to be worse. Yeah. Um, but that's for another story. It just in, delays it. Yeah, it just delays it. Yeah. You still have that in yeah. you. Um, but so, like, being vulnerable now to me is, it's just, it's not really vulnerable. It's just me saying, yo, I need help, man. Mm. Um, I'm going through some stuff yeah. and I don't know what to do at this yeah. point. And, and then, so, and then it helps because someone's there that listens, mm. all right? That's all you need. Yeah. And you get it off your chest and then you just move on. Mm. Like, and then, without realizing it, you've actually like dealt with it. Yeah, you know what I mean because you got it off your chest, mm. so you're not going out and carrying it with you. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Um. Sometimes it's not as easy as what I just said. I know there's some people out yeah. there that are really struggling with with what's going yeah. on and in, in, inside them. But yeah, don't ever be afraid to get help. Like I'm. I just want to put it out there real quick. It helps, man. Like. Some people like to do it on their own. That's cool. But for me, like how I was always anti it. Hey, bro. Like, mm. I remember when. It was, was the mindset. Yeah, everybody was, I was just yeah. like, nah, I don't need that. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, but now nah, once I started getting it, it just made me a better yeah. person. 
Um, and a bit and that's of the thing about like counselling. Like, I'm, I'm not dogging counsellors or anything, but they, um, you're doing all the work. You're counselling yourself. Yeah. If you go to a counsellor, if anybody, anybody who's ever been to a counsellor can vouch for this. Mm. If you go to counselling, they just ask you questions that will make you explain more or you know to elaborate a bit more on your feelings yeah so yeah. you're you're more or less just you only get out of the counseling session what you, what put, you put in, in. exactly yeah. exactly you know how people say they want to give up this and that yeah but it's whatever you want to put in yeah. is what the results you'll yeah. get back yeah um anything so I'm, I'm not saying counselors are a waste of time i'm just saying that you're you're counseling yourself but if yeah. you are seeing a counselor you need to be honest and you need yeah, to, to really to. Have put to, everything into it to be able to, to get some good results. results back, yeah. Have to be honest, man. Yeah, I, I unless just used you're... to look at it as, as being, like I used to look at it as mm. being like, why would I want to tell somebody that doesn't know me all my problems? Yeah. Like how are they going to help or understand what I'm thinking mm. or going through? Yeah. That's how I used to look at it. Now when I've got help, I'm like, what, what was I waiting for? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Why didn't I start this earlier? Yeah. Um, it would have helped me at a younger age, but, mm. oh, well, I think it's just, it's there. Like, uh, no one really has a time or date when they want to start something. Or, yeah. yeah. It just happens. Things just happen, and that's cool. Yeah. Mm. I just want to say um, on, on that fathering, like, because I've got myself help. How it relates to me being a father now makes so much, it's yeah. so helpful. Mm. Um, because I didn't, now I can think I don't want to burden my child with the things that I've had to deal with yeah. growing up. So um, now that I've, I'm getting help and it's like regular mm. and I'm, I'm getting help with like how I feel and, and tools to use when yeah. I'm feeling a certain type of way. Mm. It helps me invite goodness into my children because I'm not carrying this yep. burden and then transferring it from me to them. Yep. You see? Yep. It's kind of like breaking the cycle and yep. the chains. Um, and, 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 you know, like, yeah. you look at, like, um, you look at uh, our father and his father and what they've had to carry and what their uh, dad's yeah. dad carried. It's, and, um, Hurt people hurt people. Eh? Yeah. So in order yeah. for you to not pass that on, you need to be healed. You need yeah. to heal yourself. Yes. You know, yeah. work on your own broken pieces yeah. so you don't accidentally pass it down to, yeah. to the next child. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's yeah. an accident. Yeah. Um, because you're just carrying it, so yeah. you automatically offload it yeah. uh, onto the cho onto your children. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right, bro. Like, heal yourself first, mm. and then um, great yeah. things can happen in your children. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hurt people, hurt people. Um, I reckon that was a good chat. Yeah. Just before we sign off. Yeah. Uh, any advice that you'd give to new dads out there? Any advice to new dads? I would, um, yeah. The advice I'd give is just be present um, to all your young dads out there. Hey, be real present in your children's life. Even when you're a new dad, um, your children, like I said before, don't underestimate the intelligence of a baby. They know, they feel you. So always be present um, with your children. And another thing I really want to tap on is, is as a father, just tap in there with your with your missus or your wife or your girlfriend. Check on her a lot of the times um, when you get home from work and that. Just see how she's doing. See Listen to her. Give her compliments. Let her know she's doing great. She's doing a great job. Because it can be hard for them too. So, yeah, that's, that's my advice. Just check in on your missus and be present in your in your children, eh? So, that's my advice, man. Nice, bro. Nice. Sweet. Well, thank you for coming on. Sweet. Really appreciate you. Anytime, brother. Uh, thank you for having me. No, no. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure's all mine. Um, just... To everybody who's watching, thank you so much for tuning in to episode three. Um, yeah, good to get a bit of an insight from the Brig Bro. And don't forget to check out our How We Dads chat. Like, follow, share, and go home. Love your missus, love your kids, and love your family because this is How We Dad. Lash Gold.